Hi, and welcome to another Geek Moment. Today I'd like to discuss Atmel's QT600 development system for use with their QTouch library. The QTouch library enables rapid development of your touch sensing applications. Let's go ahead and see what comes in the box. First of all, we have all of the cables that you'll need for debugging, programming, and running. There's also a CD with the technical library on there. And there is the QTouch 8 touch board. Leave that in here. And the QTouch 16, which we'll be using in this demo. And the next layer of the board is the processing boards. Here we have an AT Mega 324 board. There is an X Mega 128 board, which we'll be using in this demo. And they've also supplied a Tiny 88 board. And then the final layer is the QT600 board for programming, and then one final touch board. So now we'll go ahead and get the software ready for this. The QTouch library is set up to be used with the AVR Studio 4. I'll be using AVR Studio 5, so I'll show you the steps to convert it over to be used with AVR Studio 5. Now we'll go ahead and build our example project. Here in AVR Studio 5, we'll go to File, Import, AVR Studio 4 project. Now we want to find the APS file. We'll browse for the location. Mine came up to the proper location, which is in your C drive under the program files. Atmel, Atmel QTouch libraries, generic QTouch libraries, AVR Tiny Mega and X Mega, QTouch example projects, and then we're using the X Mega 128.8a. And then you want the GNU.apps file. So we'll choose that. Go ahead and open, and then click Convert. Now AVR Studio 5 will convert this from a Studio 4 to an AVR Studio 5. As you can see, it's converted successfully. We'll click Finish. Now we need to add hex file to the build. So we'll go to Project and Properties. In the Build tab, we want to generate files. We want to generate a hex file. And then Control S to save. Now we'll go to Build and build the solution. Now as you can see, down in the output screen, the build succeeded. Now we're ready to go ahead and connect the board and program it. Before we connect these boards for programming, you want to take note of both of the 10-pin headers on both the QT600 and the AT Mega 128 boards. These headers are labeled JTAG and touch data. You want to make sure we connect them to the proper headers. The 10-pin connector for the programming part, of course, goes to the JTAG on both the QT600 board and the X Mega 128. And then we'll connect our USB to the QT600 board and to our computer for programming and power. Now we'll need to hold the reset button to turn off the touch data on the QT600 board. Now we're ready to go to AVR Studio and program these. In AVR Studio, we'll go to Tools and AVR Programming. We want to make sure we have the QT600. The device is the ATX Mega 128A1. Interface is JTAG. We'll apply these settings. And then now we need to check the board settings. Read the target. Out of the box, you want to make sure you read this. It can start at 0 volts. You want to make sure it's set at 3.3 volts. So we can go ahead and go into the memories. Under memories, we want to browse for the file. And you can see here where it's located. C program files, Atmel, QTouch libraries, generic QTouch libraries, AVR Tiny Mega X Mega QTouch example projects, and then the GNU file. We want the .hex file. Go ahead and open, and then we'll program this file to the board. Now everything's programmed. We can go ahead and close this. We're ready to run the demo. Before we run the demo, we just need to change the configuration of our board slightly. First, we'll unplug the USB. Then we need to change the 10-pin cable from the JTAG on both boards over to the touch data on both the X Mega 128 and the QT600 boards. 
Now we'll take the Samtech jumper board from the X Mega 128 board and connect that to the QTouch 16 board. Now we can reconnect USB. We should get power and ensure that your touch data light is flashing on the QT600 board. Now we're ready to open up the program and start running the demo. Okay, now in QTouch Studio, I've already loaded the XML file. To load your XML file, you want to make sure you're in design mode. Once your file's loaded, we can switch over to analysis mode. Should we click the start reading button? Now QTouch Studio is reading our board. As you can see, as I touch the slider or any of the other buttons on the QTouch 16 board, the software responds. You can see varying degrees of capacitance show up as varying colors on the board and on the software. So this just scratches the surface of QTouch Studio. In the next video, we'll explore more of the capabilities of this software. Thanks for watching. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm buying that. Ha, 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 ha.